Hi, and welcome to Wageningen University and Research. I'm Julia, and today I'm joined by people from the Master's Program of Nutrition and Health. I think it would be nice to start off with a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Rolf Martijn. I'm Program Director of the Master of Nutrition and Health, and I hope to tell you all about our program in this short video. Hi, I'm Anna de Vries. I'm a Master's student in Nutrition and Health. My specialization is Molecular Nutrition and Toxicology. Um, I grew up in the U.S. in Seattle, Washington, but I'm also Dutch, so I speak both languages. So Anne, would you mind starting off by telling us why you chose this program? Definitely. Um, I chose the program for a few reasons. One, I really, I grew up coming to the Netherlands with my family during the summers, and I always knew I wanted to live here at some point. And when choosing my master, Wageningen University was a university that I'd always been paying attention to, just because it's so well known. And Third, because of the program Nutrition and Health, especially, is very good in Wageningen, these three combined, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to study abroad, do a master's, while experiencing something different culturally. What would you say the main focus of this program is? Well, our main focus is that we like to study how nutrition influences our health, our human health, and use any tools available to study that relationship, whether molecular tools or epidemiology, or anything in between. That seems very broad. Are there different specializations within the program? Definitely. We have six specializations, five offered on campus and one offered online, um, in which we look at different levels indeed where how to study nutrition and the influence on health. Um, epidemiology and public health looks at the population level where we do observational studies, large populations over a long time. In nutritional uh, physiology and health status, we have, uh, uh, we look at individual persons, subjects, well, that we can do intervention studies with. While in molecular nutrition and toxicology, we look at a cellular level or even within the cellular level, at the DNA level, at the gene expression level. Um, sensory science is something completely different from that line in a sense that it looks at the product and how we perceive the product, our senses, taste, smell, but also feelings of satiety and satiation, uh, fullness, um, but also uh, more hedonic indicators of products such as um, savory and how we can make products more savory without adding more salt and fat because we all know that it's not a healthy mm -hmm. diet and our new specialization food digestion and health offered as of September 2017 um, looks how we can improve products and change product properties to make them more healthy more digestible but not only um, from a technological point of view but also by knowing exactly what happens within the human body with that product for those unaware, would you please describe a little bit about the course structure? Um, well, of course, they're very different. Um, but I took an example of uh, our uh, sensory science specialization. And you can see in the structure that there's a lot of courses focused on sensory science, starting with principles of sensory science, all the way to integrated sensory science, but also supporting courses such as advanced statistics, in which there's um, uh, a lot of tools that we use uh, require a, a good grasp of statistics, for example, sensometrics in the specialization. But also there's options to take a course that's completely out of the normal line of the specialization. And in this typical example, that's the course on hidden hunger and micronutrient deficiencies. And while it might seem completely different from the other courses in the program, it's actually interesting because um, if you look at micronutrient deficiencies in the world, Iron deficiency is a very important one, but if you just add iron or a bioavailable form of iron to a food product, it doesn't taste nice. Really? So by combining different fields, you can also bring up new knowledge and generate new knowledge. Is there a lot of flexibility for students to choose the courses they want to take? There's definitely flexibility in the program and students discuss that with a study advisor, but it also depends on the background. If you already have a strong training in physiology, it's of course different when compared to when you don't have any background in physiology. So there is definitely flexibility. And so what would you say has been the most exciting course for you here at Wageningen and why? Yeah, my favorite course so far has been a course, long title, Molecular Nutrition Research Tools. And in that course, we did a fasting experiment for 48 hours long. And then afterwards we measured, we took samples, we measured our glucose levels, our triglyceride levels, and even our, the effect it had on our DNA expression. Wow. 
epigenetics, a variety of things. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot of different tools to be able to do this. So it was really interesting and also really, I learned a lot. So it sounds like it's a very good preparation for your thesis. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and on that topic, have you started looking for one yet? Yeah, I started looking a while ago and I found one and I will be starting in September. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it'll be, uh, simply put, it'll be assessing the effect of proteins, their absorption in the small intestine, and then that effect on the immune system. And for students looking to get into this program, are there any certain bachelor degrees that you recommend? Well, we have a wide range of backgrounds in our program, both nationalities and academic backgrounds. But more in general, you could say that nutrition sciences, of course, is a good background. But also biomedical research directed programs such as biomedical sciences uh, do fit well. But I think I'm you did pre-med in the US and that also mm -hmm. fits well. Mm -hmm. um, at least you're doing well in the program. <laughs> um, and um, next to that, there's a gener generic uh, requirement of a GPA of at least 70% the normal grades and uh, a good proficiency in English um, but that's about it a wide range of students that end up in our program and then on top of the general admissions requirements does this program have any specific requirements um, basically every file every application is judged on its merits on its own um, because we have different backgrounds in our program and different nationalities so try to convince our board of admissions that you are the one student that should be admitted in our program and have a unique set of background uh, courses that will make you able to complete our program in two years. And we don't offer a pre-master program because we think we can train you to become a good nutrition scientist in two years. And then for students who have graduated from the program, what does the job market look like for them? Um, the job market actually looks quite good. Um, and we see a lot of students end up in a uh, first position as a researcher or a PhD fellow um, because that's also what we train people to become nutrition researchers um, we don't train people to become a dietitian they are going to be nutrition scientists doing research but of course there's also people that will work in a more junior position as a research assistant a scientific research assistant um, and as with any academic program, there's also people that become teachers or journalists or blog writers on the um, uh, huge hypes around nutrition because there's a lot to be said about that as well. So what would you say is the difference then between a dietetics program and this program at Wageningen? Yeah, I think the main difference um, from our perspective is that we train people to become researchers, to generate new knowledge new understanding about relations between topics um, and as Anna explained what she's doing in her thesis is a typical example of what we train people to do while dietitians apply that knowledge to advise their clients their patients on how to live more healthy and uh, have a more healthy diet then how would you say studying in Wageningen is for you as an international student I really like it at first coming from a big city in the US I was a little hesitant to come to such a small place because I knew I like a city, I like the aspects of a city. But coming here, I've really grown to like the small community of all international students, uh, a lot of international students, um, and the small knit community that you, you go to the market on a Saturday and you run into friends, classmates. It's really nice and it's a nice balance people have here of studying but also enjoying life outside of studying. So you find the time to be able to do extracurriculars outside of school? Definitely, yeah. I uh, am part of a few different sports associations here. I play football and also basketball and well, also attend student association events that are put on throughout the week weekend. Nice, so you don't have to be a part of those associations to participate? No, not at all. No, they are welcoming to everyone. <laughs> Thank you guys for all your answers. I hope we provided you with enough interesting information about this exciting program. But if you still have questions, please feel free to email us at students at word.nl or schedule a Skype meeting. And if you have any general questions about mission, student life, or anything at all, please check out the video, The Essentials of Studying at Wageningen University and Research. Thanks and hope to see you soon.